Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer series. Our mission is to assist you with creating more peace and tranquility in your life through anxiety release exercises and supportive tools created to slay your anxiety. Welcome to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with Ananga Sivier, and we come together weekly on Skype to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and often answer listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. Nananga and I are armed with a powerful collection of techniques to reduce anxiety. And this week we're going to be discussing general lifestyle tips to enjoy a healthy and more relaxed seasonal transition. Welcome, Ananga. It's wonderful to be here today with you again. Hi, Shen. I've been noticing my anxiety's been kicked up just a little bit now that summer seems to be here and it took a long time to come but um, we went from having the furnace on last week to 85 degree temperatures and windows open and fans on this week and I was hoping that we could talk a little bit about how to best care for ourselves through this seasonal transition from cool and wet to often hot and muggy or hot and dry and um, maybe take our conversation through some specific tips that our listeners can use to help themselves be more comfortable as they transition from spring to summer? Sure. Every season has its challenges for us in general, whatever our body type, and summer's definitely not without its challenges. It's a time where we can feel quite oppressed by the heat. I know myself, I don't do too well with the heat. I can find it very uncomfortable, and I really have a strong desire to escape from it. It makes me feel very contained and uncomfortable and restless. So that can also increase our anxiety. And some people experience more anxiety in the summer. That's their nature. Others experience more anxiety in the autumn. So if you're somebody that definitely finds increased stress, irritability or anxiety in the summer, there are lots of things you can do to help yourself. I think the easiest thing is to take advantage of being outside when it's cooler, if you possibly can. For myself, I really enjoy being outside in the evening when the sun is settling down. I like to meditate. Here in the UK, it's sort of hottest three or four in the afternoon is when I've really had enough (laughs) and I'm ready for the sun to go to bed. But usually around about six-ish, if we're not experiencing a prolonged heat spell, things start to become more comfortable. And that's the time when I really like to get outside, walk in the garden, maybe walk bare feet in the grass, or to get by water if you possibly can. To walk next to water is very cooling for the mind and as we've joked about before my inclination is to walk in the water if I possibly can to just take my shoes off and stand in a river really helps my head a lot so definitely something to do if you get the opportunity and also if it's a nice evening where the moon's up and you get that cooling moonshine to really take advantage we tend to be geared in the west to sunbathe that's what people like to do in the summer I I like to moonbathe if you can get (laughs) those cooling rays and just really meditate on that cooling light on your head and just breathe that in that can be very very calming to the mind so to take advantage of the cooler aspects of nature when you can find them swimming of course is also fantastic summer activity for stretching out tension in the muscles and cooling our blood down and then the other thing to really be careful with with diet is don't just jump for the ice drinks straight away our our inclination is to grab a glass and fill it with ice cubes ice is very aggravating to one of the body energies which is prone to anxiety so really avoid that if you can there's a ayurvedic doctor i love called dr lad and his little rhyme is ice is not nice (sighs) it's not very kind to our digestive system it really can mess with things so there's lots of things you can experiment with that in you can sip cooler drinks And experiment with teas like rose, peppermint, jasmine tea, coriander tea. These can all be really nice, just sipped, cool. And they are very cooling to the body. The effect that they have after you've drunk them on the body is very gently cooling and soothing. They're good for the digestion, good for the nervous system. So try and experiment with really healthy options in in keeping cool. Well, and also I've found that Making lighter meals and and more whole foods have been very helpful for me during the summer months as well. Do you find that as well? Definitely. I find it's not 
too beneficial for me to jump right into salad and lots of raw food. Um, it's okay occasionally. Ayurveda doesn't recommend that we mix raw and cooked foods because that confuses our digestion. One takes more energy than the other to digest. So for me, for summer, I tend to definitely, like you, I eat lighter meals. Uh, my appetite isn't so great in the summer as in the winter. We don't really need those heavier grains and heavier meals that we need in the winter. There's a very lovely grain called quinoa, which mm. is very, very good, very nutritious and very light. It's easy to cook. It just takes about 12 to 15 minutes to cook. And what I like to do is put that in a pot with a steamer on top and steam up some asparagus, sweet potatoes, summer squashes, those seasonal, light, nourishing summer foods. And that makes for a very quick and easy nourishing meal that's seasonally in tune and easier to digest. One thing that I think is interesting is that lots of people will gravitate towards having more salad in the summer. Mm -hmm. And yet salad can be a source of anxiety for people. That crunchy, cold salad. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing because you would think, how could eating salad increase anxiety? It sounds very unusual. But we actually had a letter from a listener last summer that said she'd noticed that she was eating a lot more salad in the summer and her anxiety had gone up. And when she changed her diet, it settled again. In Ayurveda, which is India's ancient science of self-healing, it's taught that like increases like. So if you have a certain body type that is increased by cold, for example, then any food that contains cold increases that. There's one body type which is particularly sensitive to anxiety, and it's called vata. And that body type has properties of being light, cold, rough, uh, changeable. So change and travel in particular, for example, upsets that body type. But if you think of salad, it's cold, it's rough, it's light. If you look at salad leaves, they've all got those properties in them. So strangely enough, as it may sound when we're new to these concepts, eating lots of salad in the summer can provoke that vata energy in us, which can increase our anxiety. So again, just look for things that are naturally sweet, juicy, soothing, easy to digest, summer squashes, zucchini, basmati rice, like that, simple light soups. You know, there are delicious summer soups. Soup doesn't have to be about autumn and winter. There's such a variety of tastes that we can explore. And just very careful to be, as we always say, gentle with yourself and try and find what you do like about the season that you can work with. One thing that's really soothing is to meditate on a rose. If you can get a real rose and just really feel the coolness of the petals and smell that fragrance or just conjure it up in your mind or use some essential oil. Rose is calming to the heart and soothing to the mind, and that can be a beautiful meditation to practice in the summer, especially if you can get near some roses and just really mindfully appreciate them. Now you're making me think of a brand new script for another album around <laughs> rose meditation. <laughs> <laughs> so many good lifestyle tips here, and, and today really opens the door for us to explore this further throughout the summer when we are going to be focusing on a summer self-care series for all of our listeners. And I look forward to doing that work with you, Ananga. And for everyone listening, we're so grateful that you're here. And we hope that the seasonal transition information that we shared with you today will help you be more comfortable. Remember to stay hydrated. Remember to make sure that you can get outside and near water if possible. Remember your breathing exercises and maybe even play with this rose meditation that Ananga has just shared with us. And hopefully you will experience a, a very gentle and easy flow from one season to the next. Thank you so much, Ananga. I love sharing time with you and doing our podcast together. Thanks, Shan. Introducing EFT Tapping with Anxiety Slayers Shan Vanderleek and Ananga Sevier. Learn how to tap away your stress and anxiety with our introduction to EFT Teleclass. You can expect a 50-minute recording of our EFT Teleclass held in April 2013, complete with the following handouts. An introduction to EFT tapping, EFT on a page, which includes a tapping diagram and prompts, 
and then the Tap and Breathe Cheat Sheet for quickly calming anxiety. Visit anxietieslayer.com to claim your copy of the Introduction to EFT Tapping Teleclass.